Hello everyone. I'm Elena and today I'm going to be presenting a project uh, to which uh, many uh, people listed on this slide have uh, greatly contributed and also many which actually not listed even. So this is a really joint work between many great uh, great people. And uh, and the topic I'm going to talk today, I mean the slides titled Hardening the Linux Guest for Confidential Cloud Computing. So what we're going to be covering is uh, first we're going to talk about well what is a protected guest concept we're talking about? How is it? What is so special with this confidential cloud computing uh, thread model? And uh, why why do we need to do some separate security hardening for it? Then we're going to go into the uh, overview and kind of details on our hardening strategy. And uh, one thing I'd like to say up front is that uh, this is uh, this is not a work which we are done basically, so which is finished. It's still work in progress, so uh, some things might still change. And uh, especially with regards to this, our last direction of fussing, we're still trying different approaches, seeing which one performs better, and so on. So, and uh, and the goal of this talk is is to both present what we've been trying to do. Uh, to try to gather suggestions uh, how it can be improved, as well as what we will talk to the end, uh, uh, basically discuss with community how we can do better together and why we think that this should be like a joint effort to community and uh, company effort versus just like Intel doing this one for uh, one of the projects they're doing. So, okay, so let's start. Why do we need to harden and what are we trying to harden? So if you take a look on this picture right here, where we have uh, shown kind of legacy um, VM software stack. So again, I'll try to be as generic as possible, but uh, for example, new setup uh, they're using, it's a KVM based setup. So I mean, the components are listed here, called for the KVM virtualization stack, but uh, in principle, this can be applied to any other hypervisor as well. So we are traditionally, I think for the last decades, uh, uh, the uh, trusted computing base for VM guest has included the host and we were uh, VMM, so in this case, a KVM and QMU. So the uh, KVM is in full control of the uh, VM guest it executes. It, access, it can access memory, register state, you know, execution content, inspect any register it once upon uh, the guest exit and so on. So this, this, is, this is a classical kind of legacy scenario. And uh, of course, in this setup, the VM guest is fully dependent on the KVM and the host, and it's included in its TCB. So what has changed now in this protected VM guest concept with the uh, introduction of this uh, confidential cloud computing is that we have started to see over the past years a number of technologies, um, hardware CPU technologies, which are different CPU vendors like AMD, Intel coming uh, with, is that uh, we're trying to take the aim of these technologies is to try to take VMM out of the TCB for the protected guest. So uh, we we would like to run the guests which are protected from the attacks done by the hypervisor. And this uh, and and how it's done for each technology, it's out of the scope of this talk. So if you're interested to learn more about these different technologies, I encourage you to uh, check the relevant talks. There's a lot of information on. I'm DCF, where it's got a lot of information on Intel TDX. So go read all or kind of watch all this information. But uh, it, the main thing which is relevant for us is that we, the uh, virtual machine um, monitor of the KVM is not anymore able to go and inspect the state of the guest. The memory is protected and guest is kind of separated. So for example, in Intel case, just to, again, very a lot of details, but just uh, kind of to give one abstraction level is that we have this component which called TDX module here, just a software component, and it kind of plays a role of a trusted stream between the guest and, and the host. And uh, it, it uh, together with other technologies like memory encryption and so on, it, it prevents uh, the malicious, potentially malicious host VMM to um, directly inspect to guest memory, uh, guest uh, register states, and, and all of, like, if the guest needs to exit, the exit first happens to this trusted uh, TDX module component and so on. So uh, if we take this for granted, this protection switch, all the CPU technologies offer us, and we're going to take it for granted from the uh, during this, this presentation. So one might ask, like, what is there to harden if, if this technology is actually provide us this way of, of 
of separating this uh, guest uh, TCB and not including the host into the TCB anymore. But unfortunately, what we have still is this uh, various communications which VM guest needs to perform. And uh, the, the existing communications which has happened, uh, I mean, they have been used for a long time. And uh, for example, like if a guest needs to read some MSR or perform some poor gem on my access, it it uh, it needs to get request this from the uh, from the hypervisor or from the host. And uh, in this scenario, like in again, if we talk concretely about Intel TDX, yes, it's going to use a specific TDX specific hyper call to DVM call to do this, and kind of uh, it's it's in, in practice going to be kind of going through the TDX module, but uh, in the, the input which is going to be consumed so that MSR which is, is, is read, it's actually the, uh, the uh, VMM and the host is going to be filling with values. So if you're now assuming that in this new or confidential cloud computing threat model that now this, this are the malicious actors, so we have to also assume that uh, basically all these pervert inputs are now malicious. So they can be malicious, they can contain malicious input. And uh, the guest software stack which consumes this malicious input has to be hardened uh, to uh, to withstand potential attacks or, or using this, uh, this attack vectors. And in addition to this pervert inputs, we also have thing which is called shared memory. It's uh, it's uh, it's memory pages which are shared between the protected guest and the host where the host has full access and the VMM has full access to kind of modify them and uh, do whatever it wants with it. It's used for a number of purposes. Uh, in our case, one big usage is Vertio because we use Vertio for as a main communication channel, but now for the um, protected guests like to outside world, the networking goes through the console and, and so on. And so guest has to be aware that this is, uh, it's actually consuming this input, which can be malicious and again, kind of handle this input gracefully. And maybe one thing which is important to mention here is that while the uh, stack, uh, the, the guest software stack can look very different. This is just one example here. I have some virtual firmware in the bottom, the kernel, Linux kernel. We're talking about Linux here, obviously. And on a user space on top, uh, you can have you know bootloaders in addition in between. You maybe can run very minimal virtual firmware and so on. But uh, the work we have doing, uh, have been doing and presenting now, I'm talking, I'm going to be specifically talking about the guest kernel. I guess Linux kernel, but it has to be actually applied uh, uh, to all the components of the stack if we want, like uh, which, which are able to receive this malicious input from the uh, host of VMM. So, but for this talk, we're going to just focus on the kernel as this one of the major pieces here in the stack. So back to the attack surfaces you discuss, uh, I've been discussing here. So this, this red attack surfaces. So, so there. Uh, so one kind of aspect of this attack surface is this very distributed attack surface. So. Uh, it's uh, if if you if you take a look, for example, and uh, I have numbers here for like 511. Uh, if you take 511 kernel, some standard Ubuntu config, you will have over 26,000 different code paths in the guest kernel, which handle this uh, parallel inputs. And this is actually even not including shared memory. This is just different parallel inputs. So it's going to read some MSRs from port IO, IO, IO. and the uh, the of course, 90% of this is going to be in drivers, not for MSRs, but for port and MMIO. But, uh, but this is a very big surface, so it's we have to kind of really think how we're going to harden this very distributed surface. And uh, the important part for it is that uh, many of these drivers, for example, they have with exception probably of networking drivers and maybe some other drivers which kind of already did some uh, went for some hardening for some different use cases. Uh, most of this code has never been written in mind with this inputs, which we are kind of reading with, you know, with MSR or IO, is actually can be malicious. So, uh, and because this code has never been written with that in mind, we might be able to see actual problems there. And uh, input complexity of handling of these inputs can be very different as we saw from the looking into code. It can be some, you know, you read an MSR, you change uh, mask a couple of bits and write it back. So very simple, like nothing really to kind of exploit much or, or misuse. Or then it can be very complicated logic with kind of operates and uh, addresses and uh, obtained from these MSRs and or, or port IO inputs. So uh, you attack surface is big. You don't know where the problems are. You might guess where, you know, some problems might be, but there is no way to kind of really knowing for sure, apart from kind of developing methodology to kind of harden this attack surface. And this is what we 
we have been doing this project. So before going into kind of the uh, hardening strategy uh, itself, let me just like, you know, very quickly kind of go over high level requirements which we try to kind of either put upon ourselves or they were just simply requested. So of course, like ideally, uh, what we would love to do is that we would like to say, well, I'll just let's cut all these channels and let's enforce these trusted channels only. And let, but uh, we can't do it. So, I mean, each of these channels presents a functionality which is needed in the guest. And we can't just say that we, we are going to just kind of disable that functionality of tech security. So we, we, we have to kind of uh, figure out how to secure it, what we have. Uh, of course, whatever technology or whatever kind of methodology we develop, it has to work with any custom kernel. Of, again, we are. For our project, we are doing it for a particular kernel, but uh, any CSPs, any uh, vendors, kernel links, kernel vendors, uh, they have to do have to be able to kind of uh, efficiently repeat this work for their own kernels. So it has to kind of take this in mind. Uh, the work is big, so um, I would like to kind of automate it as much as possible, minimize the amount of code instrumentation we have to do. This is particularly important for fuzzing because. I mean, with fuzzing, you can kind of, uh, you can successfully fuzz if it's uh, like very narrow pieces of code, if you kind of put very fine grained kind of um, uh, harnesses around, but uh, we're talking about big amount of code we need to kind of potentially reach. So we, we can't like, uh, we, can, we can't really kind of uh, follow this approach in generally. I'd like to use freely available open source tools because that's the only way we can actually kind of uh, freely publish what we're doing, the tools we're doing, uh, hope for feedback and uh, that people can take and develop it further. And hardware independence setup is also important because uh, not everyone will have access to hardware very soon and having a setup that people can replicate doesn't require dedicated hardware is important in our opinion. So, um, so what is our hardening strategy? So kind of on a high level, you can think of it as three kind of three activities uh, which are outlined here in the kind of in this nice loop. And and they're really not like step one, step two, step three activities. They're really this iterative approach where one activity will kind of, you know, results of one activity will feed and kind of help improve the next activity or modify kind of maybe the target uh, targets of next activity and so on. And we keep doing this in, in a circle kind of while we're fine tuning all our tools and finding the best kind of the best possible stuff. So the first one is is that we try to minimize of course the amount of code that gets executed in the guest kernel. Without that it, it wouldn't be possible to actually kind of do the rest of two activities. It would be too much to look manually at all that code and uh, you know even plus all that code. So we try to disable as much as we can. I'll go next slide of, of what kind of how we try to do this. Um, now what, for the code which you can't disable, so the code we actually need for our functionality and the code which we again we're only talking about, we're concerned here with the code which can take this malicious input from the host. So we have to manually audit that code and we have methodology I'm also going to explain to kind of um, 